Hello everyone, this is Ed, and I'm going to give a demonstration today of GolfStats.com. We're looking right now at the GolfStats.com homepage, and uh, I'm going to break this demonstration up into kind of five sections. The first section is I'm going to cover down here are our player results and tournament results. This is really the foundation of the site. It's the data we update and upload uh, on a daily basis. Uh, we have tournament results going back into the 70s for all the major tours plus all the majors. And we have over 6,000 player profiles. So I'll first give a demonstration of that. Uh, second, I'll go over this area up here. I call it the tool section. These are tools uh, that you can use to get insight into uh, who might play well in the week ahead. Um, and I'll go over that section then, a second. Uh, thirdly, I will go over this section right here. This is uh, content we produce every week on the upcoming tournaments by our editor, Sal Johnson. Uh, Sal's been a golf statistician for over 35 years for all the majors and the PGA Tour. And he does a preview, up, a pre large, a very uh, detailed preview column every week. He does performance charts and key fantasy stats, so I'll cover that. Uh, I'll cover this area over here down the left. A lot of useful stuff down here from Ryder Cup statistics, um, World Ranking, Solheim Cup, data download. I'll cover that area down here. Uh, and I'll touch upon as well an additional service we provide, a premium service called Golf IQ. Uh, you can come to our homepage and click here and get a separate video tour on that. So that's going to be the tour, uh, those sections. And uh, thanks for being here. Let's get started. Okay, so I'm going to show you uh, the player results section and the tournament results section. So these sections really give access to kind of the foundation of golf stats, and that is our data. If you come up here to our About Us page, you can see the data that we have on the site. We have the PGA Tour results going back to 1970 and performance stats going back to 97. For the majors, we have the Masters back to 1934, the beginning, the U.S. Open to the beginning, the Open Championship back to World War II, and the PGA Championship back to 1916, European results back to 1990, and European performance stats back to 09. We have the LPGA starting in 63, performance stats starting in 09, Champions Tour starting in 1990, and we have over 4,400 player bios. So that's really our database. It's updated pretty much daily. And uh, let me give you a little demo of what's in there. You can get in there two ways, either by player or tournament. So I can pick a player, let's say Rory McIlroy. As you start typing, it will fill in and try to match a player to what you're typing. So when you see one that you're looking for, just click it. And we'll start with their full career and statistics. So what we show here is some basic information about the player, of course, their picture. A bio, if you continue on continue reading, you'll get a complete bio. And we update these on a regular basis. Uh, for every player in the database. Uh, this is a chart that will show their uh, career, basically. The area in the yellow box is what you're seeing up here. And uh, it starts, goes up to today, back uh, to 2721. So about 12 months of data you see. And you can move this yellow box anywhere within this graph and you'll see the results. This is a graph of all the results for this particular player for Rory. And it'll show tournament. If you mouse over the tournament, it'll show you the tournament name, uh, when it was played, what he placed, his score, uh, and how much money he won. And if you want to look at any of these in detail, if you just then click there, you'll go to that tournament. So that's kind of a summary on the top of their career. Uh, over here are some stats for their career, how many starts they've had. Uh, these might, might not be every tournament they've played. It's only the tournaments for uh, the tours that we cover, which, again, I showed you earlier. Um, and then down here, you can slice and dice it even more. You can look at career totals by year. 
like I said, there's a lot of options here to slice and dice the data in many, many different ways. This will show you every year for Rory um, what his performance has been. Uh, and you can sort any of these, um, this, ta this table by clicking on any column. Um, what the yellow and green mean is that it's a way we invented to show for any column which is the high number and which is the low number. And it's just for ease of use. So let's say you wanted to uh, look at this uh, and figure out, well, which year did Rory have the most top tens? It'll instantly show you because it's highlighted in green. You don't have to go comparing number to number. And then it'll instantly show you which is the lowest, which year he had the lowest number. Okay, you can also do the same thing with wind. Let's say you want to know which year did Rory have the most wind. You don't have to look at every number. Just look for the green cell. It'll tell you six. And same way with scoring averages. Any, any chart on golf stats, we uh, use this convention of green and yellow. So you can instantly highlight which uh, year had the hot, which row had the high value, which row had the low value. There's many other ways to look at the data. You can look at their most years that they had the most greens in regulation, career stats, round totals. I'll show you an example. Let's say second round. So this will show you the low second round that Rory has had in his career and when. You can do the same thing final round. Let's say you wanted to look for the lowest final round. That'd be a 61 he shot at the RBC Canadian Open. So all these links down here allow you to look at more detail in the data. Up here, you can go into any particular year for that player, and it's by tour year. So you, if you want to go back to 2010, you can see Rory's results, this player's results in 2010. We use as many cross links as we can. So this would go to the history of that tournament, the Dubai World Championship for every year, if you wanted to go that. And this will show you Rory's performance in that tournament. And this will go to the tournament results here. It shows you the tour scores, etc. So it's a lot of information on individual players. And the best way to do it is to, again, get a trial membership and then uh, play around with it more yourself. Um, on tournaments, um, let's show you what a tournament. So we'll start with a major, probably my favorite tournament, the Masters. We'll go to the Masters. So we provide extensive information on tournaments. In this case, it's going to show the similar type of chart up on top. It'll show you a window looking at the Masters. Uh, this is going back, what, 24 years we fit on one screen. It'll highlight who they won, and then the uh, height of the chart is the winning score. So you can see when the I probably had the highest winning score in this stretch, um, so forth, and the lowest. Again, you can click on any one of these numbers to go to detail on that particular page. And then you can slide this along to look at a different segment of the years. And we go back for the masters all the way back to beginning. You can let look at any particular year for scores and prize money. And you can also look at any particular year for performance stats. Now, performance stats is just additional statistics for the tournament. And generally what uh, performance stats provide, and we provide them on a number, um, uh, most all PGA Tour and European Tour events and Champions Tour, uh, place after round, fairways hit and rank, driving yards and rank, greens, putts, score per hole, and the number of eagles, birdies, par, bogeys, and others. And this would be for, in this case, for the 2019 Masters. Again, you can sort this table just by clicking on the number. So if I wanted to look and see who had the most four fairways hit in the 2019 Masters, it would be Takumi Kanaya. If I wanted to look and see who had the most greens hit, be the winner, Tiger Woods by three over Poulter and Justin. So, so far, so, um, so forth, you can do that as well. Who had the most eagles, birdies, etc. Xander Shoffley had the most birdies in the 2019 Masters. And down here to give, to give an individual um, uh, listing of every tournament, 
um, and again, tournament records. So tournament records, I can look over here at the most greens and players with the most greens in regulation uh, over the history of the Masters. And in this case, it'd be two. Nolan Henke in 1992 tied at the top and Dustin Johnson in 2020, most greens in regulation, most greens hit regulation. We have a number of stats here you can look that up for. You can look at the most players with the most rounds under par, most rounds in the 60s. This is an individual tournament. Cameron Smith set that record last year by having four rounds in the 60s. Again, a lot of detail on every tournament. Best bet is to... Um, get a trial membership and play around with that. So that's it for covering the player results and tournament results on Golf Stats homepage. Thanks for watching. Hi, this is Ed again from Golf Stats. And now I'm going to go over our uh, content area right here on the homepage, which are our weekly posts. And what we do here is uh, give you some in-depth analysis and opinions on the coming week's tournaments. Any new columns are, are identified with the little new icon, and uh, we show the most recent four uh, previews and performance charts we've done. So this would be the preview for the players. Now this is done by our Golf Stats founder, Chief Data Officer, Sal Johnson. You can look at Sal's bio in the About Us. Sal has been doing golf statistics for all the majors, for the PGA Tour events, for ABC, Sports Illustrated, etc., for over 35 years. So in this uh, preview, which Sal does every week, usually comes out on Tuesday, uh, sometimes uh, might slip into Wednesday, but usually on Tuesday you'll see this. And um, uh, it is a very detailed analysis of the upcoming week. It starts with uh, kind of an overview of who's in the field, who's hot and who isn't going into this week. And we, we have our own unique uh, proprietary ranking system um, that will identify who are the hottest players based on their previous week's performance. And we also cover who's not hot coming into this week based on uh, a similar algorithm. Uh, Sal does extensive work to kind of give you the buzz on tour coming into this week. Um, and then uh, some highlights in there, like here, how, how could Kala Mokara, what about Dustin Johnson, is Webb Simpson back, etc. And then things you need to know about this particular tournament. Again, Sal has a tremendous history and experience and knowledge about these tournaments that he shares. Uh, look at the previous winners. And then we start getting into uh, key stats for the tournament here which might be the most important stats to uh, rank players coming into this week. And then we get into Sal's DraftKing analysis. Sal is an active um, player on DraftKings and does extensive analysis of the field and who might be the best bets coming into this week. And he gives his recommendations down here. Players that I like in certain price ranges, are there any bargains, etc. As you can see, a lot of information, background for you to help you make your piss this week. Then finally, at the end, we have who are our best bets. Our best bets. Um, so in this, this week, we have three best bets. Then we have the best of the rest that aren't in that. Solid contenders, long shots, and then people that we just don't like for whatever reason. And we give her reasons why we don't like them. So that's preview and picks. It comes out, like I said, every week, usually on Tuesday and accessible right here on the home page in this section right here. Next, we have a performance chart. These will usually come out on Sunday night. So um, this is where we look at the field coming into this week and we rank them based on their average finish. And so this will show for the field, how many events they've played, cuts they've made, how many top 10, and what has been their average finish in this event. And it's, it's simple. We just sort uh, this table 
by their average finish. But it comes out Sunday night, so it kind of gives you an early indication of who might be a good player this week. And there was usually a few comments up here about the tournament. That's our performance charts. And then finally in this section, we have our key fantasy stats. Uh, this is a lot of research that Sal does to look at this particular tournament in which PGA Tour statistics, which we have available off of our homepage, but Sal will look at which PGA Tour statistics might be the best or most useful, meaning success in those statistics might be most useful coming into this week. So for this week, for example, Sal has identified stroke gain T to green, proximity to hole, scrambling, and birdie average as the most relevant statistics for someone to play good on this course this week. So then what we do is we'll list every player in the field and where they rank in those statistics. And then we add those up and that'll give us our total rank for these uh, for the for that player and we also list their DraftKings salary so this will show you that for these four statistics this is the ranking of players who we think will play best coming into this week so that's key fantasy stats so that's it for this section here again it's updated starting on sunday night through tuesday for every week uh, for the field in that week and thank you for watching. Hi, this is Ed again from Golf Stats. And now I'm going to go over our tool section on our homepage. That's this section right up here. And what these are are tools that help you get some insight into who's playing well coming into the current week. So we'll start with prior tournaments. I would suggest you keep all the defaults. You can play around with them if you do one of our trials and it defaults to the current field. So what it will show you is the field coming into the current tournament and their performance for the previous four years of the tournament and the prior four weeks on tour. And you can change these values in the previous screen. Um, so this is the report here. These are all the columns. So for each the previous four years or the previous four weeks, we show uh, cuts made versus tournaments played. And you can mouse over this number here. You'll see these are the previous two years out of the previous four that uh, Abraham Answer, this player, played in the tournament. Cuts made percentage, rounds, average finish, median finish, and average point, draft kings, average points per round, eagles, birdies, pars, bogeys, doubles, and others. And it shows it for the same. You can sort by any one of these fields to get some insight into who's had the most rounds, say, in the previous four years for the players. Uh, you can look at average finish and so forth. And you can do this to try to get some insight in who might be playing well coming into this week or played well in the previous players' championships. An additional feature we have on this page and a lot of our uh, reports like this is this team builder tool. So this allows you to uh, build a DraftKings team or it's applicable to other games as well. So let's say I wanted Lee Westwood on my team. It'll add Lee Westwood and subtract his salary from the max of 40 to 50,000. Show me how much I have left. So as I go down, I can kind of assemble my team and see where I am point wise. So you can look for good values. I could sort again by DraftKings salary and look again at their average finish, median finish for the previous players championship four weeks on tour. And I can use this maybe to build uh, my team. I can start at the bottom and look for players down here that maybe have um, a good cuts made percentage for this tournament. Uh, so here's like Zach Johnson. He's made two of the previous three cuts in uh, 2018 and 2021. It's only $6,000. I can scroll down. Here's uh, JT Poston, two of two and so forth. So you can use these tools to get some insight. So that's prior tournaments. Let's go on to horses for courses. Again, I'm going to take the default.
So what this looks at is the previous 20 years on the course. As you know, sometimes tournaments are played on multiple tournaments can be played on the same course, not so much this week, but other weeks, other courses. But this is a summer report, but just focused on players who have played well on this course. Again, you can sort by these values up here, birdies per round, so forth. You can build your team and you can sort by DraftKings salary. And again, you have the cuts made number. So uh, Justin Thomas, for instance, a uh, high DraftKings salary, but he's played the, the um, on this course six times and has made the cut every time. So if I sorted by the lower DraftKings salary and I look for a player who's played a lot like Zach Johnson, he's probably a good bet this week. Uh, Jimmy Walker, um, Henrik Stenson, players who maybe have played here a lot, made a good percentage of cuts down low in the value. But that's horse for courses, showing you which players have played best on the course for this week. Let's go on to course stats. Course stats, similar look at courses. I can pick a certain year, uh, or I can pick a specific course and see how that course has, uh, how the results have been I've done on that course. Uh, let me, it's like, for instance, I can put in Pebble Beach. And it'll give me course statistics for that course, uh, for any tournaments that's been played on Pebble Beach um, since 1990. So um, you can scroll down all the way down. So you'll see US Opens and AT&Ts and so forth. So for every year, we will show the average round, average score per round, birdies, pars per round, bogeys, doubles, average driving distance, average greens in regulation, and average putts per round. Let's go on to Boss of the Moss. So this is analyzing players' performance by greens type. So again, we're going to just go back four years, minimum rounds eight, and look at the players' championship. Now, this week we know it lists here that we're playing on Bermuda Greens. So these would be, uh, let me look at this player's experience and performance on Bermuda Greens. So I can look and see how many tournaments they've played on Bermuda Greens over the previous four years. And I can mouse over the list number there and it'll show me which tournaments they've played in. How many cuts they've made, rounds they've played, average finish, average birdies per round. And again, I can sort by these numbers. So I might want to look at the average finish for players in this week's field on Bermuda Greens over the past four years. So that's what this will show me. And again, I know it's Bermuda Greens because we list it up here. You can look at for any greens type, but it's more pertinent this week would be the grass we're playing on this week. So this shows me that Justin Thomas has played 21 tournaments over the past four years on Bermuda Greens and has the best average finish of anyone in the field. I could also look at birdies per round. It's similar to Justin Thomas. Cameron Young, low draft king salary, uh, has played seven tournaments on Bermuda Greens, uh, second in birdies per round. All the other kind of the usual suspects, of your top players, you get down to Garrett Kigo, though, he's only 6,600. He's averaging 4.48 birdies, has made five cuts out of seven tournaments. So that's the kind of insight that Boss of the Moss can give you. We also provide every week a competitor handbook. And you can pick it for any of the previous, actually, two weeks on tour. So this is a summary for every player in the field on how they've done in recent tournaments, the well, recent players and their stats for the re recent players. This is over the last seven years. These are for all the all years. So and then for instance, John Rahm has played in four players championship, 15 rounds, average place 39, etc. Then this will show you their most recent tournament record over the past three months. 
and their PGA Tour records stats over the past 18 months. So it's a lot of background and current information. And again, it's for every player in the field. That's updated uh, every Monday. PGA Tour statistics. These are directly from the PGA Tour. They're updated every Monday. You can look at up to 36, 36 different statistics. Uh, and these can be useful if you're trying to pick someone for this week. And you know with the, uh, let's say, TPC Sawgrass, let's say it's a really important to score well on par 5 there. So I can click here and I'll look at the current PGA Tour statistics for par 5 scoring average and see who's number 1, number 2, so forth, how they rank. And you'll see the top uh, 50 players on this uh, particular report. So these are all statistics, stroke gained. Putting, strokes gain total, total driving, if you're looking at who's driving the best currently on the PGA Tour. You can look up official money, you can look up golf rankings, par 3 scoring average. All these statistics are updated every Monday. Uh, and then lastly, we have a head-to-head -head matchup tool. This can be good if you're wondering well, who might do the best this week between two players. So I type in player number one here. Let's say I pick John Rahm. And let's say for player number two, I want Colin Morikawa. You can pick the time period that you want to look compare them over. I'm just going to go six months. And you can actually pick a particular tournament, but we're just going to go previous six months. So what I see here is comparing these two players over the previous six months using all of these parameters. Tournaments played, wins, top tens, etc. And the uh, orange one is who had the better result over the previous six months based on this uh, variable. We have first round scoring average, second, third, fourth, green fairways hit, greens hit, etc. So, and then we summarize the final score down here. So in this case, Colin Morikawa overwhelmingly is better in the head-to-head -head matchup over John Rahm. You can customize this. So let's say I don't care about tournaments played. I don't really care about wins. I don't care about top 20s. Uh, I don't care about rounds under par. You can wait. In other words, you can rate. What I care the most about might be fairways hit. I want to give that two. I care about putts. Who's the better putter? So I can wait it any way I can. And then I can click on redo. So now it'll redo those numbers based on these weights. So this has three times as much important as anybody else. So someone would get three points for winning this one. That's how that works. And then the totals up does a new uh, total down here. So in this case, Calamora Cower is a better bet. But that's how head-to-head -head, um, matchup tool works. So that's it for the tool section up here. And thank you for watching. Hi, this is Ed again from Golf Stats. And now I'm going to go over... Um, this also section over here where we uh, collect a number of very useful things and services on golf stats, but they don't get a lot of attention. I just wanted to demonstrate them for you. So over here, we have a easy way to look at the official golf world rankings. Uh, these we update every Monday and you can just click there to see those. Um, PGA Tour statistics this is the same link that's up here, so I don't need to go through those again. This is one of my favorite tools on golf stats. Doesn't get a lot of use, but it's real. I think it's a really cool tournament. So this lets you look at what I call where winners come from. Let's pick the Masters. You can pick a particular player, or you can pick a, a tournament. You can also uh, fine tune it by tours. Um, winners or any round, uh, et cetera. I would include you just to play with those, but I just want to look at the Masters, and I'll show you how this works. So what this looks at is um, every Masters that's ever been played. You can narrow it down to certain years, but what it shows you is where the winner came from. So meaning where was their uh, finish after round one? 
where was the winner's finish after round two? Where was the winner's finish after round three? And of course, their final finish was that they won. And then we average the numbers. So this says that in all the Masters that have been played, um, the average finish of the winner was 6.9. After round two, the average finish was uh, 3.9. So that means on average, the Masters winner uh, was in the top four after the second round. This says that they were roughly in the top two. Uh, there's rare occasions. And these numbers will show you here what they shot and how many shots they were behind uh, going into the final round. So Tiger was uh, shot 67 in round three, and he was two shots behind, uh, and he won, etc. So I think it's a really cool report. Like I said, uh, back here, you can fine-tune it if you want. You can just do a player's name. So I could come over here and type Tiger Woods. Click on go. So this will show me every tournament Tiger's played when he's won and where his finishes were. So on average, for every win, Tiger has been 12th or less in round one. On average, fourth, round two, top two in round three, and then, of course, one there. So it's kind of a cool report to play around with. Um, and uh, that's where winners come from. We also have extensive President's Cup, Solheim Cup, and Ryder Cup statistics here. Um, and we're unique in that way. No one else has these type of statistics. So this lets you look at any Ryder Cup and uh, or Solheim or President's. And you can go by year, player, uh, or player on either side. So I can pick a year. Let me pick 2018. And I can see the results for 2018 here. And then I can pick on any individual player and see their results. Uh, this would be all time. Um, so we provide that again for the Ryder Cup. And President's Cup and Solheim Cup. Um, we have had the World X Women's World Inc. rankings. The answer is another part of golf stats that doesn't get much use, but it's again, pretty cool. It lets you kind of come up with some complicated queries of our database. Um, well, let me show you an example. Let me say I want to look up Tiger Woods in the Masters. And I want to know every time Tiger Woods has shot a first round less than or equal to 70 in the Masters. And that's my query. So who to search for? I'm searching for Tiger Woods. I'm searching for what did they do? I want to look for any time he shot a 70 in the first round. And then where did he do it in the Masters? And then I say, get the answer. So this will show me every time Tiger has shot 70 or better in the Masters. And the answer is eight. You can make these queries pretty complicated. Uh, you can do nationality, and there's some examples like here. How many times has a Canadian golfer placed in the top 10 of a men's major? So you'd put Canadian over here. You would put their place, um, final place here inside, and then you could pick a tournament. So you could pick the majors. And you would do that by... Uh, um, here, picking men's professional majors. So it's a neat tool. It's really fun to play with you. And um, uh, not one that gets a lot of use, but a pretty cool tool. Um, and then finally, I'm going to go over our data export capability. So you have the ability, if you're an annual member of Golf Stats, to download uh, the last 12 months of data. If you're a Golf IQ member, you can download up to four years of data. You get, for those years that you... Um, are allocated, uh, you get for every year, you get every tournament played and you receive these fields for that tournament. And then for every player who started the tournament, you get this data here. And it comes in a common separated value file, which is easily imported into a spreadsheet. And you can just click here to get a sample of that file. So that's it for uh, covering the also section down here. Like I said, a lot of cool stuff doesn't get a lot of use. 
and um, really thank you all for watching these videos and uh, take care. Hey, as a bonus for making it all the way to the end, if you register and use the coupon code PLAYER, P-L-A-Y-E-R, you'll get 20% off your first month or 20% off your first year, whichever you choose. So thanks again. If you have any questions, just email me at ed at golfstats.com. Thank you.